We are a consortium of Earth observation specialists working for the European Space Agency. The framework in which we operate is twofold. The first guiding principle is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 11. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. The second framework is the project implementation strategy in international financing institutions like the World Bank and other development banks. Our aim is to extend and improve the use of satellite data for the monitoring of indicators in order to reach sustainable development goal number 11. We also want to facilitate international development work in a globally consistent manner by using Earth observation data and methods. We have covered 32 cities around the globe with a total of more than 510 products and 11,000 square kilometers mapped. Our basic products comprise status and evolution of urban extent as well as land use and land cover and its change over time. More specifically, targeted maps include slum maps, maps of open and green spaces, building footprints and heights, infrastructure, as well as hazard and risk maps. Based on these maps, we generate spatial analytics and the before mentioned indicators for SDG 11. These tools are uh, very much uh, relevant because they provide evidence. In general, the preparations of bank operations take several years, but in these cases, it only took around six to eight months for the preparation. It's thanks to the whole analytics, maps, and data evidences. The best part is that it was helpful to communicate with various stakeholders on the ground. We have today Daniela Angelova from uh, GAFAG in Munich. She's a remote sensing expert for urban planning. And we have Wigger Tims from uh, NEO in the Netherlands and they will um, have both as a topic quality and accuracy of the products. So the main topics today is first why is a quality control needed? What are uh, quality control and quality assurance systems? What do they um, entail? What is metadata? What is Inspire? And then some more details on some examples uh, how this quality control documentation was done within the uh, EO Forestry Urban Project. And this all will be uh, shown with several examples from our project. Okay, so without any further words, I would uh, hand over to uh, Daniela for the first part of her presentation. Thank you, Manuela. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. So my name is Daniela Angelova from GAFA Gay in Germany and on behalf of GAF I would like to present to you the quality assurance and quality control uh, including metadata standards. Uh, for some people this, uh, this might be a, a little bit dry topic but uh, we as a remote sensing experts uh, we find it very very uh, let's say complex and um, uh, specific, which uh, a bit more attention should be paid on it. So uh, what is uh, the background? Uh, nowadays, there are uh, tons of freely available maps, uh, which are available to everyone. Uh, they are open and uh, you can easily access them through internet. Uh, however, they're missing accuracy and quality information. Uh, which uh, impedes us uh, to use them for uh, further production analysis um, in our work. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have existing, existing data, which unfortunately doesn't have any metadata available, and this makes it again uh, unused. Um, therefore, uh, the objective of today's webinar is to, de to demonstrate to you the importance of quality control and quality assurance procedures for geospatial products on one hand and to describe the QCQA procedures uh, which have been applied uh, within the EU Forest D urban project. Uh, what stands behind EU Forest D is uh, Earth Observation for Sustainable Development Urban. 
so this is the outline of my presentation today. I will start with uh, why is quality control needed? Uh, then we'll move to the quality control and quality assurance system. Uh, next will be, uh, I'll give you a bit more details on the INSPIRE metadata, which is infrastructure for spatial information in Europe. And you'll get more about it, more information about it. Uh, then <clears throat> we'll jump to the quality control documentation, which have been specifically developed and designed uh, within the framework of uh, our eu forest urban project. And last but not least, um, I will uh, conclude with some points and will give the word to my colleague uh, Wigger from uh, NEO, who will present to you the, uh, the, the second part of our presentation uh, about the accuracy assessment. So why is uh, quality control needed? Um, the quality control is actually uh, important a rigorous uh, and critical step in the geospatial production uh, as it has impact on the transparency, the repeatability, completeness and validity of uh, the products. In other words, we need a rigorous uh, QC and documentation of the methods in order to make uh, other users after us, uh, which can get uh, our products and easily repeat our methodologies. Uh, unfortunately, uh, based on our experience so far, um, we realized that there are some shortcomings uh, from ancillary data coming from our users and clients. Uh, for instance, uh, we get a lot of uh, spatial, geospatial data, which uh, unfortunately doesn't have any related meta met metadata or uh, no QC sheets or proper documentation, uh, which of course, um, renders uh, the data useless for the current set of production and uh, makes us uh, it makes our work harder but of course uh, also more challenging um, on this slide i would like to present to you uh, exactly uh, an example of um, of geospatial products so this is uh, uh, a subset area of, of the Bhopal master plan. Bhopal is a city in India, which we are currently mapping at GAF. So this map is from 2005 and the source is town and country planning in Bhopal from internet. So it's really available. So on the map, you see uh, seven different classes, namely residential, uh, which is mapped in yellow. Then we have existing other administrative in orange, orange and all other different classes which you can see uh, in the legend on the right uh, however uh, when you uh, when you look at the satellite data this is a very high resolution image from quick bird tube uh, distributed by digital globe the image is from 2005 exactly the year of the master plan of Bhopal, and you see that uh, the landscape the landscape escape is uh, much more heterogeneous what uh, compared to what has been mapped in the master plan. Uh, therefore, of course, we took the master plan into consideration uh, during our uh, mapping, but since it, it didn't have any metadata or proper documentation, we were careful. Uh, and this is our uh, final result from the mapping, uh, which we did for 2005. So you see that uh, now we have 11 different classes which are on the bottom displayed in the legend uh, compared to the seven classes uh, in the master plan. Uh, and you see that our product is much more detailed than what has been mapped in the uh, master plan. So uh, this is again the master plan from 2005, which we acquired uh, from internet and also the uh, satellite, the, the very high resolution satellite image from uh, QuickBird. And this is our uh, mapping, which we did here at CAF uh, with the 11 different classes, uh, as, you can, uh, as you can see on the map. Uh, another good example of why is quality control needed. Uh, so this is uh, um, a part of the transport network of Dodoma, another city in Tanzania, which we mapped uh, last year. Uh, and this is uh, this transport network shapefile has been uh, delivered uh, from the stakeholders in Tanzania to us. 
And of course, uh, unfortunately, it didn't have any met metadata or proper documentation so that we know when was mapped, what is the accuracy, what is the quality of this map, so that we uh, know uh, how credible is uh, for our purpose, whether we can rely on this map or not. What we did, so we had this ancillary data uh, received from the stakeholders in Tanzania. And uh, we just overlay it with a very high uh, resolution image from Pleiades, uh, uh, 1B satellite. Uh, so this uh, very high resolution image is from 2016. Uh, you see on the bottom right from uh, 30 of May to the 2016. And you see that actually the ancillary data received from the user, it has some slight discrepancies when it's overlaid on the VHR image. So what we did, we cleaned this ancillary data, the shapefile from the user, and uh, we use it, let's say, as a, back, um, as a skeleton, and we adjust it according uh, to the uh, satellite image. So this is our final result, a result of the transport network of the DOMA, which has been developed within the framework of our project. And the accuracy that we got is 97.4%. Uh, maybe you'll have questions how this accuracy has been done. Uh, this is uh, this will uh, Wigger explain you further in the second part of the presentation. So um, the EU first the urban uh, quality control process uh, it include it is a system which is part of our project and it's uh, available to all users and counterparts. What does this uh, QCQA system do? On one hand, uh, it records and documents all quality relevant processes, uh, which are ranging from agreed product requirements, different types of input data and their quality. And on the other hand, uh, it records the subsequent processing and accuracy assessment steps. Uh, in the next slide, I will show you, uh, I'll just go to the next slide and you'll see what I mean. Uh, so the quality, the QC QNA system, the main goal of it is to verify the completeness, the logical consistency, geometric and thematic accuracy, and also to verify that metadata follows all, all ISO standards uh, regarding geographic data quality and inspired data specifications. So uh, to give you a better overview of what I mean uh, with uh, all those bullet points, um, so we start with the user needs, uh, needs and standards, and we specify, let's say, a portfolio of products which the user needs. Then, uh, of course, based on the uh, product, uh, product specifications, uh, we um, or acquire the data, and we also get all ancillary data from the, which is available from the user, such as topographic maps, uh, existent uh, land use land cover maps, um, let's say them as well, uh, digital elevation model, and all different uh, shape file with, uh, with points like hospitals, schools, or whatever. And the first thing we do is, of course, uh, we control the quality of this data in order for us uh, to know how credible is it, it is and to, uh, to further proceed with the pre-processing of this data. So once we quality control the data input, uh, we go to the next step, which is the pre-processing. Uh, we uh, we pre-process the data, and once we do the quality control on the pre-processed data, we are ready to uh, start the mapping activities, which is the third step uh, in, uh, in my figure, the thematic processing. When the thematic processing or the so-called mapping activities are done, of course, we do uh, again a QC, intermediate QC step uh, in order to be able to go to the analysis and the, and the modeling work. So uh, within the analysis and modeling work, uh, this step includes all the statistics and uh, further spatial analytics which have been um, required by the user. Uh, then, um, last but not least, uh, after we implemented all those intermediate quality control steps within, uh, during the period of uh, the different 
elements uh, of our QC Q&A system. We validate the overall product and then we deliver it to the user. Um, let's go further and uh, tell you a bit more about the INSPIRE metadata. So uh, INSPIRE stands for Inf Infrastructure for Spatial Information in Europe and has been developed by the European Commission. So the metadata um, in general provides additional information about the delivered products to, to be better understood. Uh, what is the metadata uh, within our EU Forest the Urban project? Uh, it's a, <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's a unique advantage uh, from our side that we, uh, within our project, uh, we developed a harmonized approach to provide a core set of metadata elements together with uh, quality assurance and quality control sheets. Uh, which are part of all the delivered geospatial products to the end users. So it means that uh, after each of the products within our project uh, is, uh, are uh, developed and generated, um, we have a thorough um, quality control. And once uh, we have um, good results from this quality control, uh, we are able to uh, forward it to our user. Uh, the data format of the metadata, it's always provided as an XML file, uh, which is compliant with the ISO standard 19,115 and also 19,139, the, uh, the so-called metadata and XML uh, scheme implementation. Uh, the mini minimum required information uh, for the generation of a metadata XML file has been specified by, by the European Commission with the following regulation, which you see on the slide. Uh, on December the 3rd, 2008, and it contains 10 uh, different elements. So this is, uh, this is the uh, initial page of the Inspire Geo, Geo portal. And you see on the bottom of the toolbar, the 10 different elements, which uh, has to be completed by the uh, GS um, producer uh, in order to have uh, an XML file at the end. So to start with, we have the first step. Uh, the first step is the metadata, and you see here the organization name, which has to be filled. Uh, let's say in our case is CAP, and then the email, the metadata date when the me metadata was created. The second step is the identification. Uh, which includes uh, resource title, abstract, like a short description of the product. And uh, look, this is uh, in, in the identification tab, we have the first locator. So locator is actually where it's like a general location of, of your product. Then we move to the classification tab, uh, which has a drop down menu of topic categories like climatology, planning and cadastral transportation and um, much more. And regarding on the content, what you're mapping, you just choose from the drop down menu one of those uh, topic categories. Uh, the third tab is the keywords. So uh, I would say this is, uh, for me personally, is uh, rather uh, one of the most important because depending on what keywords you define on the product, th this uh, you can allow other people to easily uh, find it. So you, you have to definitely define a better, good keywords in order for your product to be uh, easily found by others. Then we have the geographic information, uh, which is uh, area coverage uh, in general, the temporal reference, uh, which includes a temporal extent, the date of publication, date of last revision, date of creation, those kind of things. So whenever, for example, one product has been developed, let's say on 1st of January, but then the user wanted to be updated and we updated it on 1st of February and we just feel uh, we always create a new XML uh, file and we just put the, the date of publication uh, is 1st of January and date of last revision is 1st of February. Uh, we have the quality and validity, which includes the spatial resolution and lineage of the product 
Conformity, uh, this is um, a field uh, which uh, gives, provides you the degree of conformance to the specifications. So as you, uh, if you remember from my previous slide in the figure, uh, at the beginning we are starting with the user needs and the specific portfolio specifications. And this conformity tab, it's just uh, you have to feel whether you uh, complied with all the uh, user requirements or not. Then we have the constraints tab, uh, which is related to the data access or limitations, because sometimes uh, the user, uh, let's say, wants the data only for, for himself, so we restrict the data uh, within this tab. And last but not least is the responsible party. So uh, there uh, you put the contact details and role uh, of the contact person. Uh, I put here the I included the link so you can easily um, access it after the webinar is finished or if you have any further questions you can always contact us. So uh, I would like to tell you a bit more about the documentation um, within the EU Forest D Urban Project. Uh, as I already mentioned, it's a unique tool and actually this is what I what makes uh, our consortium special to other projects and partners uh, because uh, we provide a comprehensive and transparent summary of each production step and uh, we assure that changes uh, which have been made to the input data are properly documented for the let's say for the person that for the next person who wants to see what has been done to the input data not only this but we also um, we are uh, with this uh, QC uh, sheets, we are able to evaluate the provided services and products and thus make, um, making them um, repeat, repeatable and easily understandable by the user. Uh, the curious assessment of the map, map products and the related error matrices, of course, are highly important um, in order to rate the quality and to compare the map products from different service providers. And further detail about the accuracy assessment uh, will be given by my colleague Uyghur. Um, also, the, document, the documentation of the QC checks, uh, it includes, uh, as I already mentioned, um, so we check the um, satellite and all ancillary data, we check the interim and the final products uh, through different intermediate quality checks, as you already saw in the figure. And of course, we have um, accuracy, um, accuracy assessment results, and we uh, try to be consistent and complete in all our documentation of the products. So this is how uh, quality uh, Q QA and Q QC sheet look like. Um, so we have uh, the initial page uh, where uh, with the different sub subsections what has been uh, covered and then this is uh, just a screenshot let's uh, the first one on the top right is uh, from ancillary, ancillary data quality so this is exactly the data that we are getting from the user and we have a different checks uh, like uh, the readability of the data uh, like whether the data covers the whole area of interest for us, what is the, the depth, the data format and so on. And we just go carefully through each uh, point and we check the data uh, based on it. Then we have uh, an example of the ge geometric corrections. So we have um, uh, the satellite image images listed, their processing date, and all different types of geometric cor corrections which ha have been implemented on the satellite data. So what is the value of the eu 4 d urban uh, services and um, what is our pr product generation based on? First, uh, it's, very, uh, it's based on a verified user uh, requirements. Second, it's uh, also uh, encompassing harmonized and standard, standardized state-of-the-art methodologies. It has a comprehensive and transparent documentation. Uh, it's applicable. Uh, um, we have applied a statistically sound accuracy assessment. Uh, also, we use the stringent quality control and transparent documentation. 
And last but not least, we are always in contact with the user uh, in order to get their uh, feedback and to improve our services. So this was the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I give the floor to Wigger. Wigger, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Daniela. Um, as uh, she said, I will continue with the uh, part of the accuracy assessment and the quality of products. Uh, some of the products you already seen uh, and I will uh, go into them. So the outline, uh, which parts I will uh, continue with. Uh, first of all, why is it uh, actually important to do an accuracy assessment? Um, uh, and then I will use uh, Arusha city mapping as an example of how to set up an accuracy assessment. And finally, I will uh, finish uh, with the accuracy assessment results of some of the uh, mapping products. So why is accuracy assessment important? Um, spatial data and maps, uh, such as uh, provided uh, uh, by the uh, corporation, are uh, increasingly being used for decision making. Um, if you do that, it is very important uh, to be able to estimate the accuracy of the maps. Can I use this map or can I not use this map for a specific uh, purpose? Uh, as an example, that uh, not all data is always uh, as good as you expect. Um, even uh, well-known uh, products can have a low accuracy. Um, this is an example of uh, a Google satellite image uh, at the border of uh, Hong Kong and mainland China. Uh, you can see uh, a bridge and the river, which is the actual border. If we now overlay the Google Maps map, we get this image. What happens? The bridge is gone. The river is filled with buildings. How can this be? Uh, the reason is uh, uh, this, according to uh, what we found, is that um, China has implemented a certain strategy or a regulation that foreign companies uh, must uh, use a specific coordinate system. Uh, and this coordinate system uses a random offset of uh, uh, 50 between 500 meters. On the other hand, Hong Kong mainland is uh, uh, not part of this uh, restriction. So that's why uh, the Hong Kong area looks good and the uh, mainland China part uh, looks quite funny. So how do we, are we able to estimate the uh, accuracy of uh, certain maps? What should we do? Um, so what should we do is we quantify the quality of a map or a data product. So we can measure the uncertainty, uh, so we know if it can be used for a specific purpose. As I said before, I will use the Arusha city mapping as an uh, example. Uh, several products have been uh, uh, developed and I will go uh, through all the steps that uh, should be taken to uh, do a proper accuracy assessment. So the accuracy assessment uh, has three main uh, components. First of all, it's the sampling design. How are the control points uh, chosen or defined? Secondly, uh, the response design, which reference is being used to control these points. And thirdly, is the analysis, the design, uh, where we will be able to quantify really the quality of the map. When choosing a sample design, uh, it should be important uh, to uh, keep uh, certain objectives in mind. What do you want to achieve with it? So four things that uh, can be thought about is that the sample should provide the information that is representative to the total population of your map. Secondly, the sample design should be practical. It's very nice to think of an, uh, a sampling design uh, which is very enhanced, but uh, in practice is not exec executable. Um, the sample uh, should be spatially well distributed. So it should not be only focused uh, on one location with many points, but you want to uh, uh, know the quality of your entire map area. And the fourth point is that uh, it should be cost effective. Um, it is uh, no point to uh, spend uh, hundreds of hours going into the field while also other uh, methods are uh, perfectly fine uh, to estimate the quality of your map. Then the first part, uh, the sample design. Uh, there are several sample uh, designs uh, uh, used uh, and I will uh, illustrate uh, four common of them. The first one is uh, random sampling. 
Uh, here, the, the software uh, randomly pick uh, locations of a certain number of samples. Uh, this is the statistically most sound way to uh, uh, sample or, or to provide, uh, to create samples. The second one is the stratified random sampling. Uh, this is more or less the same as the random sampling. However, uh, a number of samples will be picked per strata. Uh, a strata can be seen as a class uh, in your map. So for example, agriculture, uh, water, or natural areas. So for each of them, you choose uh, a number of uh, samples that you want to uh, select. The third one is the systematic uh, sampling. Um, here they are evenly distributed over the area, as you can see. So the distance between the points uh, is the same. Uh, advantage is that your entire map can be covered, um, but uh, it's, for example, not sure if you have uh, exactly the same number of points uh, uh, for all the classes, if that is something you want. The fourth one is cluster sampling. As you can see, there are certain clusters in which uh, samples are located. Um, big advantage of this is that uh, you can, for example, choose the location of these uh, clusters, which are easily reachable. Um, uh, if you want to do uh, field work, for example, to uh, get uh, uh, information about uh, your data. Um, but of course, uh, statistically, this is a less uh, sound uh, uh, method. For the Arusha city uh, mapping, uh, single stage uh, stratified random sampling was, uh, was used. So for all the classes that were mapped, uh, sample uh, points were uh, generated and each of the samples was at least uh, 150 meters apart to avoid clustering and autocorrelation. Uh, the following uh, uh, formula was used to calculate uh, the sample size for uh, all the individual uh, strata and an additional 10% uh, of oversampling was applied to compensate for stratification inefficiencies and potentially inadequate samples. So for example, uh, uh, clouds on an image or uh, shady areas on an image, uh, which are not uh, possible to, to interpret. This is the result of the, the sample sizes uh, for, the, for the map. Uh, as you can see, all the classes are, uh, are mentioned. Uh, and the number of sampling points that were uh, generated for each of these uh, classes. If you then distribute them over the map, uh, it looks uh, like this. So again, all the classes and all the validation points uh, are there. So they are uh, randomly uh, selected, but uh, uh, taking into account that there are different uh, strata or classes. The sampling for the uh, road network is uh, slightly different uh, because um, yeah, you really want to uh, look at a road, uh, so it's difficult to pick a random uh, point in that way. Um, so for the road, uh, the transportation network, uh, a grid of uh, 450 by 450 meters was uh, created. And within that, uh, you see that there are uh, green uh, selected grids. So these grids, they are selected for, um, uh, for sampling. So that's 2%. This one was then uh, further subdivided into uh, nine grids of each uh, 150 by 150 meters. And at the intersections between these grids, the points were selected uh, as sample points. And these were checked uh, visually on a, a very high resolution image to see uh, if they were accurate, how far they were away from uh, what was visible on the, on the image. Then I come to the response design. Uh, the response design uh, is the part where you uh, select uh, your reference information. So you have a map, you have classes. Um, how do you uh, compare uh, these sample points on the map with reality? Well, then there are several uh, input sources that you can use as reference information. Um, for main uh, ones that are often used is very high resolution satellite imagery. Uh, but you could also use aerial photography um, or if you don't have this kind of information available, you could also use the uh, satellite imagery that was used uh, for, the, for the mapping purposes. Or a fourth method is uh, field work. So go into the field, look at the locations uh, of the sample points and uh, really visually check uh, what kind of uh, class is there. 
For the uh, Arusha city mapping, uh, uh, several uh, sources were used um, as a reference. Uh, very high resolution optical uh, image was used, uh, high resolution optical image was used, and ancillary data uh, was used uh, mainly for uh, uh, the road network. Then we come to the uh, last part, which is the analysis uh, design. Uh, so here we're going to quantify uh, uh, the quality of the map. Well, we can uh, assume that in a, a mapping uh, exercise like this, uh, uh, Almost each class uh, usually has errors. Um, and in most situations, these errors for a class are not equal. So in order to calculate these errors, as well as the uncertainties, the, the confidence intervals uh, for the area of each class, a statistically sound accuracy assessment should be performed. Uh, the result of this assessment is usually presented in an error matrix. So how does this error matrix look like? Um, on the left side, we have the classification. So this is the map. And as an example, we have uh, here three classes, which are hardwood, conifer, and other. On the other side here at the top, we have the reference. The reference, uh, again, we have the classes, is what uh, is reality. So the reference uh, uh, image, for example. If we're then going to look at uh, the numbers, um, the diagonal numbers, uh, so for example here, 28, 15, and 20, are the sites that were classified correctly. So hardwood on the map is exactly also hardwood on the image. Conifer was also conifer 15. So in this case, if we look at conifer, uh, 15 out of 21 were mapped uh, correctly. Uh, here we can see the totals, uh, which used to a given uh, individual class accuracy. And here we see the totals uh, uh, of the reference. Then on the other hand, we have, uh, besides the diagonal line, we have the numbers which shows uh, the sites that were misclassified according to the reference data. Uh, so for example, if we look at the hardwood, uh, we said it was hardwood, but in fact it was 14 times uh, conifer on the reference image. So all these uh, uh, numbers uh, can be used to calculate uh, accuracy assessment statistics. So if we want to know something about the overall accuracy of the map, uh, we can use the uh, diagonal numbers. Uh, we count them, we sum them, and we divide it by the total numbers uh, of, the, uh, available, of the population. And in this case, the overall accuracy is 63%. Then uh, there are uh, two types of errors, which I would like to uh, go into a bit further, which is omission and commission. So any site that is omitted from the correct class is on the other hand, committed to an incorrect class. So if we said it was hardwood, but it was not hardwood, it should have been classified as one of the other two. Um, they are also known as users and producers accuracy. So how do we calculate those? Um, first of all, I want to uh, describe a little bit about uh, what they are. So the producer's accuracy is the percentage of the time a class identified on the ground or on the reference is classified into the same category on the map. So for example, an omission is when hardwood is classified as other. Then user's accuracy. This is the percentage of the time a class identified on the map is classified into the same category on the ground. So for example, uh, 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 when um, other is classified as hardwood, so the other way around. Um, this we can also calculate from the uh, uh, error matrix. Um, so as you can see here, the user's accuracy uh, uh, is, uh, for example, for hardwood is here 28 divided by uh, the total is 57. So the user's accuracy is 49% and the producer's accuracy is actually 93%. If we then look at the confusion matrix uh, or error matrix that was produced for uh, the uh, uh, Arusha city modeling, then it looks like this. So here we see all the uh, classes uh, that, were, that were mapped. Uh, and here you see how often they uh, were exactly uh, the same on the uh, reference data. At the right, we can see the user accuracy uh, at a confidence interval of 95%. Um, and below we see the producer accuracy um, 
uh, also at a confidence interval of 95%. So the overall accuracy here uh, was 88.8%. Then I come to some uh, results of the accuracy assessments that were done for the various products in the Arusha City modeling. Um, this is the result of the uh, accuracy assessment for the transportation network. As said before, this was done a little bit different. Here it was really measured uh, what the distance was uh, from the uh, sample point uh, or on the mapped point and what we saw in reality on the satellite image. Um, so as you can see, by far most of the uh, selected uh, points um, were uh, within one and a half meter of um, uh, the correct location, which is very good. And then uh, the further distance there were, uh, the frequency also de uh, uh, decreases. Then we have the results of the urban green area. So for these also uh, validation points were selected and uh, checked on imagery of 2006 and 2016. Um, or 2005 and 2015, my apologies. Uh, and you can see here the accuracy assessment uh, that was done, um, which uh, both give uh, very good uh, accuracy uh, uh, numbers of 94.9 and 92.6%. And then uh, last, the informal settlement. Uh, here we also can see that uh, validation points were, uh, were selected. And again, with the uh, accuracy assessment results, below. This was my part about uh, how to do an accuracy assessment. I would like to uh, give it back uh, to Manuela now. Thank you, Ria.